there's so many definitions and, and everywhere you go, you can read everybody's kind of take on that. And, and it's really a little bit unique, I think, for each individual person in the situation that they're in. But for me, leadership is about how do we get people to do the things they need to do and feel good doing it? Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, my name is Rick Nusky. Welcome back to the My Future Business Show. I'm on the line with Mark Noon. Now, we're going to be talking about leadership. Uh, we're going to be talking about his experiences in the military and how these have uh, impacted his mindset around leadership. And uh, we're going to be talking about his wonderful book called Set Up. And uh, with that, Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful to have you here. Like we were just talking about earlier, you have this ex expansive biography and, uh, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, your life, essentially, leading up to this sure. point where you decided to write um, set up. But you're also heading up um, a, a student group business, which we'll also talk about a little bit in the in the show. But right now, I'd love to learn a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, so I spent 20 years in the United States Air Force, um, mil uh, military background, obviously, but a medical background. I spent most of my most of that career in the hospital, hospital leadership, executive uh, leadership as well. Mm -hmm. um, once I retired from the military, I started to work at an organization called the Studi Group, which is a healthcare coaching organization. My role it has been in executive coach. Uh, right now, I do mostly speaking, leadership development. That's been my focus, and really, that stems from my early days in the military, where Leadership training was pretty good, but at the same time, um, how well did it prepare me for very specific things in leadership once I got into those leadership roles? And that's where the book kind of comes from. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. I, I always like to know a little bit about uh, the lifestyle of the people behind these wonderful books and, and just yeah. a little bit about uh, yourself in terms of do you have much downtime uh, and what do you like to do when you're not uh, working or, or creating these wonderful books? Yeah, well, I, raising four kids, they're all gone now, so they're, they were empty nesters, my wife and I. Oh. Um, but in my uh, my downtime, which uh, you know is is sporadic, it could be a, a week and a half at home, like it is right now, or it could be on the road constantly, week after week. Um, but in my downtime, I love I love reading new information, getting new information because one, it helps me in my business, but it also helps me just as a personal, personally, as a leader, as a, as an influencer. Do you find yourself as, uh, you know, getting away from um, everything in terms of the uh, part of the intellectual process from a physiological standpoint? How important is it for you personally to get away and take a walk and, uh, you know, clear your mind? And, and what do you do when you do those sorts of things? Yeah, you and I were just talking about how early we like to rise and that's kind of our time of day. And it's mine, especially I get up early before anybody in the neighborhood, anybody in the house. I usually take the dog out for a walk. After that, I go for a run. I usually exercise, go to the gym, do different things like that. So that's how I start my day. I think that's an important element for me. Some people are good at exercising in the afternoon. For me, I'm exhausted by that time. I'm, I'm ready to do family things, you know. But that morning time is especially important to taking good care of yourself. Yeah, thank you. I think these are very important elements to bring in context for this uh, discussion that we're just about to yeah. have on leadership. And um, yeah. the focus for the My Future Business audience is obviously for startups and uh, existing small to medium sized um, businesses, as well as authors. Obviously, mm -hmm. I love reading books. I don't care if they're digital or if they're in hard paperback form. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I actually like to grab a physical book. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful things that I think we need to promote more of for the up and coming generations. Uh, Mark, sure. I, I think where we should start is about the fundamentals what yeah. does leadership actually mean a lot of a lot of times there's confusion around yeah. it yeah you know i i think the there's so many definitions and, and everywhere you go you can read everybody's kind of take on that and, and it's really a little bit unique i think for each individual person in the situation that they're in but for me leadership is about how do we how do we get people to do the things they need to do um, and, and feel good doing it. Um, leading is about setting a goal, setting a vision. How do we communicate the vision of what we want to do as a leader and then be able to get the people that are following us, people that, are, that work for us or work around us to buy into that vision and then do everything they can to make that vision come to pass. 
But at the same time, it's not about doing all the work. Um, uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those elements in the book about what leadership really is and, and the elements that help the team be successful, which makes the leader look good. Is this, you know, I always like to, you know, tie it back to personal and private. Um, I guess as a parent, for example, is, mm-hmm. it, is it something that we, uh, you know, are not so necessarily good at at the start of our journey with our, our children, <laughs> this whole idea of leadership? And how does it apply in that respect? Yeah, you know, I, I, it's funny to think how many books there are in parenting, and we probably read a bunch of them as we were, you know, before we had children or whenever, but yet, at the same time, as soon as that child's born, some of that stuff kind of goes out the window, right? It doesn't always work, right? <laughs> or, or you know, you have more than one child. One child's a certain way, and another one's a different way, and, oh, and yes. what's worked with one doesn't work with the other, and I think leadership's very much the same way, you know. In a military organization, we are all trained the same way, but people are still very unique. So when I would go from base to base in different assignments, the, the, the job was the same. Leadership doesn't change, but the people do. And so the personalities change. And so you have to be able to adapt situationally to have leadership that, that applies to one and, and a little bit differently maybe than it applies to another. Yeah, fantastic feedback. I, I, I always think about the psychology behind leadership. And I think to myself, if I'm from a different culture, if I have a different belief system, that in turn affects my, my thought and therefore my behavior. Um, where does this start? Where does the leadership journey for you to start? start? Is, is it as early as that? You know, the, one of the things that I realized coming up in the military world is, again, I had some pretty good leadership training, but I always say this, you know, in, the, in, in my medical world, in the, in the laboratories, what I was in, I was a good laboratory technician, uh, literally on a Friday, to year 2000. By Tuesday, that, that Tuesday, I got a promotion and I became a lab director. And I use this, this illustration. I say, well, what prepared me to be a lab director? What pre- prepared me for that leadership role? And li- literally, it was a weekend to think about it. Right. Friday, I'm really good at my job. Somebody says, you're going to be the leader. Tuesday, I'm the leader. Three days later, I've got to be, you know, all this knowledge and all this ability. And so I I set out from that point to say, what does it take to set people up for a leadership role? What do we do? How early do we even start that? You know, I I think I've taught my children how to be parents and none of them have children yet. So they're I'm preparing them, setting them up, so to speak, for that role. Same thing with leadership. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, um, oh, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about the the elements of the book, the the eight components, the eight principles, um, if yeah. we could, because I think yeah. they're really going to lay out some groundwork for people to start considering, uh, and in turn, uh, when they go and get your book, obviously. So, yeah. let's yeah. work through those principles. Yeah. So you know, really, number one is is how do you um, are you self aware? Do you know what your own strengths and weaknesses are? And do you concentrate on those strengths? You know, a lot of times I, I really help people focus on their strengths and getting better at their strengths. And a lot of times the weaknesses will take care of themselves. But are they aware of where they are as a leader, what their capacity is, what their abilities are? Um, are they new to a leadership role? Have they been in a leadership role for a long time, but maybe never learned some of those skills that are necessary? Um, so I think that's an important starting point. Mm-hmm. Um, and once we get past that, then we can start to add in the other elements, but you really got to know what the foundation is in the baseline. In your perspective, and this is all we've got, I have a perspective of who I think might be a good leader. Who for right. you right now, Mark, is a good leader? That... You know, typically it's somebody who I can see listens really well, communicates really well. Um, you know, there's inherent characteristics, I think, in leadership. We always look for the dynamic um, and this always bothered me, that term. Um, I'm a very outgoing personality, and, but I've seen some really strong leaders who don't have that dynamic personality, but they're good listeners. They're good communicators. They pay attention to what's going on around them. They know that they have some areas that they're not as strong in, and they're not afraid to surround themselves or bring people in who complement those areas that maybe they aren't as good at. Those are the things that I look for. And I say, you know, that's a person who potentially has some strong leadership opportunity. Yes, thank you. Do you think um, leadership is situational? Uh, and I'm, uh, and this, is this why, uh, from, a, I guess, a HR perspective, that organizations, senior execs spend so much time trying to find the right fit for their organization? Yeah, I, I think it is situational. I, I, but I also think there's some background things that we can look at for people to bring them into an organization. 
But once they're in the organization, I think that's what's key as well is do we bring them on board quick enough? Do we give them the skills and the, the abilities they need so that they integrate with the new culture that they're a part of, the new um, situation that they're in? Or do we just expect that they're going to take their old skills from a different situation and think that they're going to apply here? Or do we think that we can, they're just automatically going to learn that on their own? And that's what happens a lot of times is people get in this situation and they, they fend for themselves and nobody's really set them up to be successful in a new situation. It's such a dynamic platform, such a dynamic thing to think about, given that we've just talked about the situational nature of leadership. Uh, yeah. Every situation is completely different. So right. um, what are some of the common threads, regardless of the experiences and the, and the situation at hand, what are some of the common threads that you have seen in leaders? So the common threads, you mean from a um, From a their behavior, from, you know, is behavior. it important to be liked? I don't know. What yeah. are some of them? Yeah. You know, I think it's always important to be liked. I mean, no, everybody wants a boss that they can like, that they can, they can um, enjoy being around. I think that's part of that. But I think number one is, is, is do, do new leaders get to know the people that are in their organization and let them know, uh, let them, the, the, the team know who that person is and how, what they're like. I say it like this. There's three things that every employee wants in a leader. They want to know you, you, who you are. They want to know you're good at what you do and they want to know you care about them. Who you are is you as a person. Um, what are your likes and dislikes? What are the things that, that you appreciate the most? Um, secondly is, are you good at what you do? They want to know that you're good. You're going to be a good leader. Now they may understand that you just got in this role. Maybe you haven't had a leadership position before, but they also want to know that you're willing to grow and get better and become a better leader. And number three is, do you care? Do you care about the people that are, uh, work for you, that work around you? Do you actually show interest in who they are and what's important to them? Yeah, thank you. I, um, I'm thinking about this um, ability to transfer, and I've seen it before, leaders going from one industry sector or type of business to another. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. something that you've experienced where you've had to take a leader and help them unlearn learnt behaviors? <laughs> I think so, because you know I saw this in my military career, because here's the thing about a military world is you don't really have a choice as to who you hire or who comes into a position um, necessarily. Sometimes there's, there's a little bit of that, but most of the time somebody shows up and, and they're yours and you have to figure out how are they going to adapt and fit into this new environment. Now, again, military is military. A lot of the rules and regulations are the same. A lot of the processes are the same, but personalities are very different. And I would go to, you know, one place I was stationed in the, the state of Arkansas and then I was stationed another time in Hawaii, very different cultures, very different people. Again, same military people but a different surroundings. And so I think it's important for people to be able to adapt. And so when new, somebody new comes in, first thing they need to know is, this is the culture that exists here. Here's how we are going to continue to work and make this even better place to work. I, I, I can't help but think about uh, Robert Cialdini's influence and our mm -hmm. ability to communicate, um, be it in a military sense where you know they are thrust upon you, don't have that choice, as opposed right. to a civilian life where you do have that choice. Um, how how important is it to be um, influential, and what are some of the the I guess the steps to becoming influential if you don't feel confident that you are? Yeah, I think going back to those three things: are are you good at what you do? Do people know you, and and are, do you care about them? I think establishing that relationship. You know, I, I think about some of the times in, in some of my folks, um, for instance, one time I, I sent a thank you note to a, one of my young um, enlisted troop. So, it, it, you know, and he was uh, newer to the, to the role. He wasn't a leader. He's in, in our particular laboratory. I sent a thank you note to his mom, thanking her for raising such a great young man, you know. And, and when I did that, it was all of a sudden in his eyes, I became this person, this, this different kind of relationship. And even though in a military you have to, there's, there's order and there's, there's rank and, and there's certain elements of friendships that aren't allowed. Mm -hmm. Yet he had such a respect for me just because I sent a note to his mom telling all the wonderful things that he was doing. Because I knew his relationship with his mom was very strong. Yep. And once she said, wow, this is a great guy that you're working for, he all of a sudden had a different viewpoint of me in the sense that, in essence, I could ask him to do anything and he wouldn't even hesitate. I mean, that's the kind of relationship I think is necessary to have influence. Uh, and I, what I take away from that is strategy. You know, you, you must, as a leader, have almost a, 
I guess, an omnipresent strategic mindset as to each individual. That's fine for smaller organizations, but I guess from a, a larger platoon yeah. or whatever it is from a military right. perspective, that's right. one to many. Is, is that it, approach different? It is. And, you know, when I, I talk to audiences, I get the same type of feedback. And, and some of the things they say is, you know, that's fine if you've got 10 people in your department. But what if you have, you know, 59 people in your department and you've got to get to know 59 people? And honestly, I, I tell them, yes, you need to get to know 59 people. Now, typically in organizations like that, you have a, um, you know, kind of a, a hierarchy. So I'm not yep. in, in charge of all those 59 people. I'm just the head and there's, there's element managers and directors who are in charge of those people. But at the same time, they need to know who I am. They need to know I'm good at what I do and they need to know I care about them. And in some way I need to show that to the group. It may not be all 59 individually. I may not send yep. a thank you note to 59 different parents around the world, but they need to know that they can count on me to, um, be there when they need somebody they can know that even though i'm not directly involved in their day-to-day -day activities they know i care about what goes on in their world yeah there's some wonderful insights for everybody who's on the call today now i always think about color i always think about perception uh mm -hmm. you know because perception is essentially everything if i yeah. perceive a certain color or the way somebody holds themselves shoulders back mm -hmm. upright right. well presented how important yeah. is that as part of your leadership role yeah, you know, I, th this is where I kind of come to that part of the, the dynamic. And, and a lot of times we're looking for leaders who have a certain persona or we're looking for leaders who are fit that mold of what we think somebody's supposed to be. And, and like you just said, the, the person who holds their head high, maybe they're the person who, you know, works the room when they when they walk in, everybody knows that they're there. And, and certainly we look for that. And, and there's probably a lot of great characteristics with somebody like that. But also watch the quiet ones and I watch the quiet ones to see what they do in the room and how they listen to people and how they interact with people and 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 maybe they're not always the person who's very forward and very sure of themselves. But that doesn't mean that they don't have the capacity to be a great leader. Those are the things that I so I look at them I say okay I would work with them differently than I would this person over here but I think they both have capacity to be good. Yeah, I, and I often think about those people that I see as well and I, and I talk with and I think just quietly, do you believe that intuition as somebody who's looking for leaders plays any mm -hmm. part to this, how you feel just inside about somebody? Yeah, I wish I had a little bit more intuition. It probably would have saved me some heartache over the years just <laughs> in, in not getting to know people, you know, because there's that certain person that, that, that just has the ability just to know people and read people just on a, a single conversation. and. I've never had really that that gift or that sense. So for me, it's always relied on some of those other characteristics that I just talked about, things that I can observe and have to spend time with. And I'm not the person typically that can that can ascertain that right away. I've seen people do that. I've yeah. seen people with that and say, you know, there's something about that person. And over the course of time, I've watched them and they have become exactly what that person. So I, I look to those people who have intuition to say, yeah. hey, what do you think? I'm looking at this person from this perspective, like you just said. You're looking at it from that perspective, what's your gut feeling? Yeah. Usually, you got to go with their gut feeling because it's usually pretty right. <laughs> you know, because there's two, there's two opportunities here. Either you're, either you're right and you're very right or you're wrong or you're very wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> it happens sometimes. And I've made mistakes. There's no doubt. I've, I've put a few people in positions and went, oh, maybe that wasn't the best choice. Uh, but then, you know, even another thing as a leader is saying, you know, I made a mistake. I think this is a better fit. Or I think this is the direction we need to go. And, and being willing to say, I'm vulnerable. I made a mistake. I'm not. I'm human. I think that's another characteristic of leader. Good leadership. Yeah, that's wonderful feedback, Mark. Because you know this yeah. ability to be truthful and yeah. forthright, and you know, be very clear on on what you need from someone is probably yeah. It sets the scene, doesn't it? Right. Right. Now, right. in terms of the book setup, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy the process? Did it come naturally for you, or was it was it a journey? You know, um, I started writing the book several years ago, um, and then, you know, as a lot of authors will do, you, you, you try to get some people to publish it, some people aren't interested, and so you kind of set it aside, and so I set it aside for a while. Then I, I had a lot of great experiences that really added a lot of content to the book, and so I, I kind of brought myself back to it. I said, let's try to make this thing happen again, and then the organization I worked for, Studio Group, is, decided they would publish that, and, and they didn't have a book specifically on leader development. Um, and so it was a good fit. It was good timing. 
the process is, you know, I tell people it's like having a baby, not that I've had a baby, but I mean, it's like, <laughs> I guess I look at it like this. It's like, that's my baby. Even naming the book, that wasn't my first choice of the name set up. Um, that was our marketing department. And, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, this is my baby. I get to name this baby. And they're like, no, that doesn't work. You know, that's not how it works. And so those were processes I think were a little bit difficult that I wasn't expecting. But the, yeah. overall, it was a lot of fun to do. It really was. It was at a, like a, how long did it take to put together this book from the time? Well, because it was mostly written, um, it took us about three months of proofreading and, and adding and subtracting and, and cutting and adding different things and uh, about three months for that process. And then the printing process was probably about a month and a half after that. So really inside of six months, uh, beginning of last year through July, we were able to put that book together. It's Wonderful. Is this, uh, is this one of those books you just open the front cover and start reading or is it something you can go back to? Um, you know, it, it, there's kind of a theme that runs through the book. Um, my girls played uh, volleyball all through high school and college, and, and there's this theme that the setup actually comes from the, the position in volleyball called the setter who sets up the ball and, and sets the whole play in action. That's where kind of that, that idea came from. So there's a little bit of a theme that runs through it. Reading necessarily from front to back, you could probably open up one chapter on, on you know, delegation and just read that and, and learn things about delegation without having to know what's previously in the book. So, but easily read from, from start to finish in probably three, three and a half hours, honestly. It's, it's not a real long book. It's about 120 pages. And usually the best types of books are those that get straight to the point, aren't they? Right. And this one pretty much does that. I, I don't beat around the bush a whole lot with it. The chapters are very simple. Um, they're, they're very straight to the point. You know exactly what this chapter is going to bring you. There's no misleading and saying, oh, I thought it was going to talk about this and it talks about something else. Yes, and no fillers, et cetera. Right, right. So where are we going to get this book if we, if we want to access it? So Amazon is probably the number one place to get it. Um, our company also, if you go to Studer Group, that's S-T-U-D-E-R-G-R-O-U-P, studergroup.com. And I'll make those links available. Publishing. Yeah, and click on publishing, you'll find that book available as well. It's a little bit cheaper there than it is on Amazon, but Amazon will have it to you the next day and a little quicker and a little easier. So. Fantastic. Now let's talk about Studer Group. Uh, yeah. What can you share with us about this wonderful group? So, so there's two things I want to share. One is this is an organization I work for. So this is, this is the business that I'm part of. Yep. Um, Studio Group is a healthcare coaching organization here in the States. We also have an office in Australia, by the way, in, in Sydney. Um, and in Canada as well. We're based out of Toronto, Canada. So we are all over those areas um, consulting with and coaching hospital healthcare organizations primarily. My role at leader development is really to come into an organization, spend a day with a group of leaders, teaching them a lot of the principles from the book as well as other things because we find that a lot of times organizations kind of thrust people into leadership without really preparing them to do the job well. So that's where our, our focus, my focus is with the organization. Another company that we're just working on starting is what we call Leadership 10, leadership, T-E-N yep. dot org. Um, that's another organization that I'm starting with three other consultants to begin to bring leadership to our local area here in Florida where I live, as well as nationally eventually as well. And that mm -hmm. will be more of a coaching versus speaking um, type of development. Yeah, that's wonderful. So um, when people uh, first meet you, meet your organization, uh, do yeah. they talk to, you know, the head of HR or head of uh, you know, some department? And what is the process from there? Do you, or do you work with a network of hospitals and healthcare providers? To be able to bring me in to speak? Is yes. that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So typically we have a, a speaking department. We have some folks that that's their primary role is to organize um, opportunities and events. We have numbers of speakers in our organization. I'm just one of those. Um, my, again, we have different focuses, different niches that people have in mind is particularly leader development, as well as some other areas in healthcare, but leadership development, generational gaps, that's a big one that we, we spend a lot of time with. And then yep. change leadership. A lot of change leadership right now because there's so much happening so quickly in the healthcare arena, but really in all industries. And that's the thing. What I share and what the book is, you know, it's, it's based on my military, it's based on my healthcare career but it's applicable to every area of business. Yeah, and that's the thing I was taking away from this because I know that um, our audience, uh, startup entrepreneurs, small to medium sized right. business owners, they can all take something from this. Anybody in any sector could take right. some value. Right, we, we just finished a coaching session this last spring locally here with a, a group of young entrepreneurial businessmen who we just walked chapter by chapter through this book over a course of about four months. and. And by the time we were done, it was amazing the difference in what I saw. And some of these were 
um, single business, meaning they're a, a one man shop yep. to somebody who manages great, you know, large, large organizations with, with 40 and 50 and 60 people. So um, the variety there was really kind of fun. And it was fun to see young entrepreneurial people who were le- realizing that they needed stronger leadership skills to carry their business to the direction they wanted it to go. Yeah, that's fantastic. So yeah. what's coming up for you? Do you have any speaking arrangements coming up that people should know about? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually I'm all over the country, um, all over um, throughout each and every month. Right now, December's a little slow for us, so that's perfect because we're working into the holidays. That always works nice for my travel schedule. Nice. Plus, all the tourists are out there traveling, so that makes things a little easier on me. I don't have to, as much traffic out there. Um, I'm going to be in Kansas. I'm going to be in Chicago, University of Chicago Health System coming up in December, doing a, an all-day event with them, which I'm really, really excited about. We also host conferences. You go to studiogroup.com, you'll see some conferences that we have around the country uh, Denver, Washington, D.C., L.A., Las Vegas, lots of different places. My goal, honestly, is to be in Australia next year. Hopefully I get a chance to come that way and do some speaking with our organization out there. Well, absolutely. You will always have a place to stay if you come and visit Australia. There's no doubt about that. So for everybody who's on the call today, this is a wonderful topic, a very important topic, regardless of the industry sector that you're involved with, something to be taken away from this book. So if you want to learn more, I'll be making the links available below this uh, below this post, no matter where you find it. Mark, it's been just such a wonderful wonderful treat spending some time with you talking about leadership on the my future business show today thank you so much rick it's been my pleasure thanks for joining us today if you enjoyed the call then make sure to subscribe leave a comment share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews and if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop